Hustle with Drew here. Welcome to the video. Today's topic is gonna be the iPad photo booth business and how to get started for the cheapest way possible. And you guys, I'm talking about possibly a hundred, couple hundred dollars just to get started, which, you know, you're gonna make your money back if you follow everything that I tell you and use all of the tips and tricks and you follow it, you should be able to make your money back literally in one event. And uh, that's just unheard of, you know? A lot of businesses, you gotta start off a certain amount of money, it takes months, sometimes a year. But with this business, literally, it could just be one time. So, all right, uh, this video is gonna be a long format video um, just because there's so much information. I'm really just basically emptying my mind um, with all the information and giving it to you guys here. So I'm gonna be reading off of uh, some notes that I made so that the video is a little structured. All right, so one would be, um, what exactly is an iPad photo booth? That is a great question. So a lot of you may not even know. Uh, you might be more familiar with the traditional photo booth where it has a professional camera and then you have a uh, tablet and that tablet basically uh, is like the brain of it where it takes the photo, um, it uses the camera and then you see yourself through the tablet and then after it takes the three photos, it'll print three strips. So that is a traditional photo booth. And uh, what an iPad photo booth is, um, let me show you is this this is it it's basically an ipad um you'll see other ones that have like a uh, a backing on it where uh you can't see through it but this is the ipad booth i'm going to recommend you guys starting off with but yeah an ipad photo booth is basically an ipad um the shell is basically just a way for the ipad to be held and then a light that's it two things something to hold and then something to give off light for the photos and with the iPad photo booth, you're using the screen, obviously, from the iPad, and it uses the front-facing camera. Uh, and with those qualities, you can eliminate, not with the qualities, but with this setup, you eliminate a, a need for a professional camera. And if you're doing it digitally only, which I recommend you start off doing, there's no prints. And the beautiful thing about this is you don't need an attendant because it runs itself. You know, this is the menu, uh, the screen I created, it gives all the instructions. So there's really no reason for someone not to know how to use the booth. So that is just, you know, really quick what an iPad photo booth is. Um, it'll, the software, you have to install software and the software will let you take one photo or three photos and after the photos, it'll let your, the guest text or email those images or GIFs or whatever. Um, experience you put so that's what an ipad photo booth is so let's talk um i kind of mentioned already but the next thing is why is an ipad photo booth um why do i prefer it and why am i recommending you guys getting started with this one is the price you can't beat the price it's you, you if you already have an ipad the largest expense for your setup is done um obviously you want to get newer ipads because they're going to have better cameras uh, front-facing cameras, um, but I'll get into what iPad you guys should buy and it's it's gonna blow your mind um, How lucky we are to be in this year and this iPad that came out, but yeah, it's the, it's the setup So, you know, the iPad's gonna be the most expensive part But you can also, you know, the setup I'm gonna show you is under a hundred dollars for the shell uh, Versus three thousand dollars or fifteen hundred is what other companies are charging I'm gonna send you guys all to Amazon. You can buy this so, uh, stuff yourself um, another reason why the iPad photo booth business is great and it's ideal is how fast it is to set up. Um, when you're doing businesses, you got to really think of your time as money and the more time you're spending at an event or doing something is taking away from your time, which is money because you can be using that time to be promoting or doing other businesses that are actually making you money. So with the iPad booth, literally it takes five, if you're just renting out the shell, um, it literally you're in and out under five minutes if you know what you're doing and you've done it five minutes in and out so that's great is just the setup time uh, versus traditional photo booths where you have to check the, the camera you have a flash or some other lighting you have big backdrops prop tables and that could take up to an hour sometimes even more so the time um, and another reason I love the iPad photo booth business is it's so scalable it's easy because it's cheap and the price point is so low to where you'll be getting booked a lot faster for these digital booths versus the traditional booths, just, just based off the price. Um, and, and then now let's go about why the iPad photo booth business isn't so great. So here's some of the negatives. One, uh, a lot of people don't know about it. The, uh, the, the biggest hurdle you're gonna have is selling your customers on the experience. So 
everyone's gonna be like really used to the prints. They're gonna really like expect like, oh, we want prints, we want prints. Well, that's when you come in and you say, well, hey, look, at this price point, you get everything that that booth will give you minus prints, minus an attendant also, because these booths run themselves. There's not gonna be any awkward, you know, uh, moments between the photo booth attendant and your guests. They're gonna, they're gonna let loose and really have uh, a different experience because there's no one there. So, you know, that, that's a struggle is, is selling the booth. You, get ha you have to know exactly what your photo booth can do. That way when, when you have a, to drop some knowledge onto your customer, you'll know exactly why the digital iPad booth is better. Um, another negative reason is the, the quality of the photos. You gotta remember you are using an iPad. Uh, traditional photo booths have professional grade cameras most of the time, so the quality, and not, not just that the lighting isn't as great. So yeah, a negative is the images, but if you get the iPad that I'm recommending, which is the 2021 version iPad, uh, link again in the description, you're gonna be getting the best iPad front-facing camera, and it's actually the cheapest iPad you can pretty much buy. So it's insane. Like no other iPads have been this great when it comes to uh, front-facing camera. So yeah, those are the negatives. Um, next one would be, um, okay, so how does the iPad business work? Uh, iPad photo booth business. So basically you will um, create the way you, you can get your business in front of potential buyers. They'll contact you. Once you get contacted, you know, you gotta first make sure that the event is in a city or close enough to where you actually will travel there. Um, you know, I'm not gonna get into like the nitty gritty, like the details, but long story short, you communicate with the uh, customer, you guys agree, you go all the way out to the event, you drop off the photo booth from the allotted time that you guys had agreed on, so agreed upon. So let's say it's a three hour event, four hour event. Um, you drop it off, you leave, you come back when it comes time to, uh, to pick up the booth, you pick it up and you go home. It's simple, there's no other, once, once you're done, you're done. Um, it's pretty much just like any other rental service, you know, whether it's a jumper or a candy cotton, cotton candy making machine, it's all pretty much the same process. Um, all right. Uh, so, okay, number five would be what would you need, what do you need to get started in the iPad photo booth business? If we're talking just bare bones and just the minimum, so you're spending the least amount of money, and um, obviously, like, if you've ever watched any of my videos, all the businesses that I'm recommending, I'm always going the cheapest route. Um, not just, it's just for the reasons because it's like, I, I understand, you know, you may not have a lot of money and this is a big risk because you don't know how it's gonna pan out. But trust me guys, take a chance. Right now is the perfect time. And I'm gonna show you right now, hands down, the cheapest, cheapest setup ever. It's not in no means the nicest or the most sturdiest, but I've done 100, 100 plus events in the beginning of my uh, photo booth career just with this setup. It's simple. All right, so the first thing you're gonna need, obviously, is the iPad, because without the iPad, all of this is useless, literally. So you're gonna wanna go get the, uh, if you already have an iPad and uh, you take some photos and some good lighting and you're, you like the way the images look and they're okay to you, go for it, but if you don't have an iPad, or you want an iPad that has an amazing front-facing camera, I recommend the uh, 2021 ninth gen iPad. Um, you're gonna wanna buy the Wi-Fi plus cellular version. That way you can put a SIM card inside the photo booth and have internet from the phone carrier of your choosing. Why, why is that important? Well, it's important because that's how you get your, um, that's how the guests get their photos, is through the iPad sending it out via the, the way they get to internet. So if you just get the Wi-Fi one, if your clients don't have Wi-Fi set up at the venue, then you're not gonna be able to send out those images until you get a good connection. But if you have the cellular version and you have a SIM card in there, you won't really depend on their, serv their internet service. So, all right, back to the iPad. Uh, the link to the best and the cheapest new iPad that you can buy in the link in the description below. Um, you could just use the Wi-Fi only, but you have to make sure that your guest 
at the venue have solid internet. If not, again, they won't get their photos on time. So it'll be the 2021 uh, 10.2 iPad. And that uh, Wi-Fi version, I'll put that in the description, starts off around 320 on Amazon, just depending on the time you buy it. Or the one I'm recommending is about 430 bucks for the iPad, um, same one, same version, just with cellular capabilities. Okay, so now that you have your iPad, you have that figured out, you need your sh uh, quote unquote shell. How do you hold your, your iPad for your guests to use? And you're gonna want to buy this 18 inch ring light kit on Amazon, uh, it includes uh, the light, it includes, sorry for the mess in the back, this little mounting, um, the hot shoe thing, it goes, it slides into the back of the light, and uh, sorry if you can't see that, but it's including that. And also included is the tripod. This will hold the light, um, it's adjustable, there's little knobs here, um, obviously the power cord, so, you know, the cool thing about this is it adjusts. So you can tilt it, you can move it down, you can move it up. Um, that, this whole ring light kit with everything I just mentioned, it's about $80 on Amazon, which is insane. Like, <laughs> this is where you're saving your money because uh, other photo booth companies are gonna charge you, um, you know, photo booth manufacturers are gonna charge you anywhere from 1500 all the way up to like three grand. Or if you want to get fancy, I've seen some photo booths, photo booths cost about, iPad photo booths cost about five grand. So you get super expensive. So once you have that, you have your iPad, you have your ring light, you're going to also want to buy this um, iPad mounting bracket. So the little hot shoe thing that is included with the ring light, uh, you screw it on and it attaches here. This whole thing's adjustable. So if you decide you want a different iPad later, maybe like the 12.9 one to get a bigger screen, it adjusts. You don't have to buy a new photo booth. Um, and yeah, so sorry, before I move on, this is gonna cost you about 10 to $13 on Amazon, link in the description as well, um, just depending on the time you buy it. So yeah, guys, this, this whole setup, um, do some research. Go to uh, Google, type in iPad photo booth shell, Look at the prices. You'll see it's 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 nicer. I totally I gotta say that it'll be more appealing, um, but for the price, you're it's gonna take you a long time to make your money back. And also, rec keep in mind, guys, you're gonna be do if you follow my instructions, all the advertising and all of the ways you're gonna get jobs is free. You're gonna try not to spend any money. You gotta remember if you have your clients, your potential clients are finding you on places where it's free you're most likely gonna have um, clients that are budgets that have some smaller budgets. Sorry, I was trying to think of a way to say that without like a, sounding offen offensive. Um, but yeah, your clients are lower tier budget clients. So that's what you need. Those three things will get you started. Um, yes, you can buy backdrops. Um, you can buy prop tables, but this is just the bare minimum. It's just to offer this booth. You know, if you get a customer and they're like, oh, we want a backdrop, well, you can maybe send them to Amazon, but like, here, like, look, we, we just, we're in and out. Our price is low because it's just the booth itself. If you want to provide your own backdrop, you can. Um, but I'm also going to link in description a backdrop stand and uh, a professional grade uh, backdrop company. It's the one we have, but it's not necessary. Like again, you just need the base, the iPad, the ring light, and the, the thing. That'll get you started. Um, okay, where are we? Let's talk about, okay, so the next thing you're gonna need, you have your photo booth set up, all right? You have your iPad, you have your ring light. Obviously with the kit, it comes with the tripod that is adjustable. You have your mount, you're ready to go. This is what you have. Um, you're gonna need software. This is super important. Um, I'm not gonna go into detail about softwares. I'm just gonna tell you the one I use because it's the cheapest one. It's $100 for life. Uh, you don't need to buy any other softwares. This is just a single one. So I don't know if you could see, but it's called Simple Booth Classic. Uh, other softwares are like uh, Halo, which is the same company as Simple Booth, but they'll charge you per month or per time that you use it. Curator Live, great software, but you have to pay $30 every time you use it or pay on a monthly basis to unlock some more features. And then Luma Booth, don't recommend it. I've had nothing but problems with this, but it's $20 a month for two devices, unlimited events. So in the long run, Simple Booth, 100, you can use it unlimited uh, amount of events on a single iPad. So getting started, 
I highly recommend it. So let's just go through the experience, right? I want to show you guys what your uh, customers, guests will go through. So you can set up a attract screen. So it's the first, it's the screen that they're going to see before they even start it. It just has instructions. I just did it in Photoshop. Um, when you get the software, you can like uh, see exactly what I'm talking about. Like you can add your own attract screen. So I just went with the instructions. It just gives you the the experience. But let's just bypass that. This video is going to be super long. So so while it's taking three photos, countdown. This is all set through the app. Um, this isn't an app review or uh, I don't know. I'm not going to go through it. But I just want to show you guys what is it like and how it works. So all right, it's going to take three photos, and bef before you get to the event, you should already have a template made for your clients. The customers so this is it this is the layout they wanted they they gave me the information happy birthday Anna December 18th so yeah the first thing you can do is add basically filters just like Instagram uh, which you know it's a selling point because other professional booths don't have this many filters or any filters um, you can do so many other things right you can like change the layout and this is where it gets cool you can go there you can turn it to a gif and uh, yeah, let's just say we choose that. We go to next, and this is the experience. This is what your selling point is. It's like, hey, like why why have a photo booth that takes prints? Because everyone that's taking the prints, they're taking photos of the prints. Well, our photo booth, what it does, it gives you instant access to the photos. You can do text, right? You put in a number, then you send, it gets sent. They can email it for the old school people. <laughs> Or what's really cool is there's a QR code. So if there's a bunch of people, you pull this up, they just scan it, they scan it, they scan it, and then they move on. Also, a huge selling point, you guys, I can't stress this enough. Um, let's just end it. So then it goes back. A uh, huge selling point for digital iPad photo booths are the online gallery. This is something that a lot of traditional print booths don't offer or, or galleries that are online. Uh, you'll see some companies, but they'll charge a lot. They do include it, but um, just make sure you say like, hey, like I know you want prints, but what we're offering is a free online gallery. So let's say you want to go through after the event, you can look at all the photos you like, you can download them, and if you like, you can print them yourself. Um, or if you want to add it like after, you can say, or you can show me the ones you want, and I can print them and send them to you after your event. But just make sure you, you do the math and you know how much to charge and if you're willing to do that. I don't, we don't do that, but it's always good to offer it. Uh, they just feel more comfortable when they know that there is a print option. So now that we got that out of the way, um, let's talk about... Okay, so yeah, we talked about the software. Um, so yeah, an another thing you would need to buy, uh, not necessary, Something you should, you could get is a, a backdrop. It's basically, you know, you have your booth, and then behind behind the booth or in front of it, I guess it would be a backdrop, a backdrop stand with a backdrop. Like I mentioned before, you, you don't really need to offer that. If you're just getting started, it could just be something you can work towards and pay with later. Because with backdrops, you're gonna notice right away that one or two is not enough. Because some guests might want a gold one. You don't have a gold one. You might have a black and white and a blue one. It, it, it can just get very very expensive fast so always say like hey we're a bare minimum um company and that's why the price is the way it is is because it's the booth but again make sure they know that they can add their own backdrop or if they'd like to pay go in halves and you keep the booth or partially pay I, i've heard of people doing that um prop table you guys do not do prop tables with this business uh idea you're gonna find very quickly that when you come to pick up your booth Props are destroyed, uh, props are missing, and I know a lot of you are gonna be like, well, you're gonna talk about a contract, aren't they liable for the props? It's not worth it. You know, it might be $10 worth of props, or a $2 prop, $3 prop, whatever. It's not worth making your customer pay for it and end up getting a bad review, because those bad reviews in the long run can cost you money. So, I would not recommend prop tables, but if you do, make sure your props are very cheap, and make sure you're charging, um, something where it's worth the the struggle or the hassle so let's talk about contracts so contracts um i cannot tell you guys uh what exactly my contracts say i was advised not to um 
but you're gonna want to basically make a contract uh, stating like what what terms the contract is, doesn't need to be like you can make it yourself but if you have the money go to a lawyer and get that done because they're gonna know exactly how to word a contract but the one we use are just is, is basically just a, a contract that I drew up um, I don't ever really plan on using it hopefully never but it's always good to have just just in case um, I am kind of skipping the, the, the line here, but you're gonna, um, let's just talk about the contract real quick. Okay, so, mm, 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 mm. so you want, you want to make sure if you're making your own contract, you're going to basically go to Google Docs, create a form that you could save as a word. That way, when you send it to your customer for them to, to digitally sign or to sign and then take photos and send it back, it's easy, but just make sure your contract has the following terms that they will pay for all damages and stolen items. Um, that's huge because if you're doing a drop off and uh, you're leaving the photo booth unattended, something could happen. Um, thank God we've never had anything happen, but it's good to be in there just in case. Um, so you also want to put that the how much they're paying for the photo booth and how much is due. That way that when you, when you go time to collect your money or you ask them like, hey, uh, the rest of the money is due before we arrive. Um, they can just say, well, I thought you said this price. Well, it's like, no, look, look, the contract says this and this and that. You signed it, you agreed to it. Like, like that's always good to have. Um, also, uh, in the contract, uh, put that the, the photo booth is not to be moved at all. Once you place it in a place, that's where it stays. No one can move it. And that's important because a lot of times people will try to move the booth to get more people into a photo, but it's not their equipment, they don't care, you know? And, and with this setup, it's not like the sturdiest, but it'll get the job done. It's just not meant to be moved, especially if there's a lot of people that are drunk or, oh, little evil kids just punching at it for no reason. It's just let them know that it's not to be moved and if it's moved, there's a possible $100 fee or, or something. Just, just so when they read the contract, they see that and they're aware. So if they're at the party and they see their uncle or something trying to move it, they're like, hey, hey, no, don't move it. So. That's something I'll never ever enforce either. Like if someone moves a photo booth, I'm never gonna charge them a hundred bucks. It's just there to kind of scare them <laughs> a little bit, so. Okay, also super important, make sure that your contract has the time, the date, and the address of the event. Um, when I say the time, I mean from, they want the booth from 8 p.m. to midnight. So, so that you know exactly where you're going. Um, and if, you know, for some odd reason, your client sends you somewhere else, um, you can be like, hey, well, in the contract, you told me to come here. It happens all the time. Like once, well, not all the time. It happened a few times. They'll, they'll send you the, the wrong address. For example, last time it happened, uh, the customer sent me to their house. I asked for the event address, but they gave me their house address. And luckily the event was close by, but we were a little bit late and um, she was kind of upset at first, but I let her know, I'm like, hey, this is the address you gave me for the event. And then, um, yeah, she just realized it was her mistake. It's basically just covering your own ass. Um, all right. Okay, another uh, last, okay. Uh, okay, yeah, last thing on the contract. Not necessary, but I, I recommend you do it because it's gonna help you when your promotion is a model release, basically just saying like, hey, um, we have the right to use these photos for our promotional reasons, um, you know, for our Instagram, whatever. Uh, if, and then put like, also like, if you do not want us to use photos, please send us an email stating that you would like to, to, uh, these photos from the event not to be used. We respect your privacy. Half the time they don't, like not even half. I don't think we've ever had a customer or client re, uh, send an email or let us know that they do not want us to use the photos. They don't care, you know? So, um, and again, you guys, I'm not a lawyer, but this is just what I use. Um, I do not want anyone to, to go off of what we use and have it backfire and then come at me. <laughs> I'm just here making a video for free for you guys so you guys can start the business. Um, yeah, and then also obviously make sure that there's a, a place for them to sign the contract and once they once you get it ready, um, you send it back, they sign it, it comes to you, you sign it, and then at the event you can just hand them a signed copy. So everyone has theirs. Um, okay, so yeah, I did jump around a little bit. Okay, so website. Um, do you need a website? You actually really don't. 
if you're doing the iPad photo booth business, um, you know, an Instagram account or social media is enough. Um, a, a website will help you when it com comes to like venues or higher end clients, but half the time, majority of people don't even ask um, for, for a website. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, if, if, if you're getting jobs, how I'm going to tell you how to get the jobs, they don't ask for a website. But long term, yes, that would be a great idea. Business cards, get them. Make them yourself. If you have to make a flyer so, and then just put your phone number or where they can see your work, you want to leave them at the event next to uh, your booth because people using the booth, they'll be, they love it, right? They're having a good time. If you don't leave a card, the experience for them ends there. But if they take a card, who knows, that could turn into a potential job and that job can turn into so many other jobs because it's word of mouth, you know? So business cards or flyers, make sure you leave them at the event. Um, obviously make social media accounts. It's super important. Make an Instagram, make a Facebook, TikTok, everything. It's free. You have to do it. It's free. And if you don't see any return on it right away, trust me, be patient because when your company blows up and your Instagram account has a couple thousand followers, that could make or break um, someone trying to hire you. You know, followers do matter. I know it's, it sounds so superficial, but accounts like that, it's super important. And I'm going to get into detail how you can get jobs just networking on Instagram. Uh, super, super powerful, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, you will also need to create an email. Um, so my company is Rustic Charm Booth. I have Rustic Charm Booth at Gmail. You know, this is how I send out the... Uh, the questions for the event so they want to book i um i send them a questionnaire just saying where's the event time this and that this and that this and that well that's how i did in the beginning i have a website where i do it now but it's just an email you want to send out to your customers so you you need an email but we'll get into that later um okay so how to get jobs this is this is it this is the, the holy grail this is how i seriously survived three years of photo boothing without spending a dime um, offer up. If you're not familiar with offer up, it is an app available um, on the app store on your phone. It's a place where people sell things to people nearby. So, you know, if you want to sell a table, um, let's say Janet lives in three cities across from me, like 10 miles away. Uh, I go on my app, I type in whatever she's selling and then her profile or her image, her listing will show up. Then I chat with her and then we arrange for me to pick it up or you can even ship it. So OfferUp is tricky because OfferUp is only meant to sell, you're only meant to sell actual tangible items like, you know, this, this, this little thing for my camera, right? That, that is what you're supposed to sell, not a photo booth service because that's what you're offering is a service. So you kind of have to, it's a great area, but if you just make a listing called photo booth, Take some photos of your setup. Um, be careful not to put rental or, you know, like per hour or whatever, how you're charging. Make sure you are uh, very, very, very minimal when it comes to your listing. So just put message for details in the description. And then when they message you, that's when you can say, yeah, it's a rental. Half the time, no, 80% of the time, they'll understand it's a rental. You know, if you take photos of the booth people using it, you know, um, and your profile is like your company logo. They, they understand. So offer up is powerful. It's free. Use it. Craigslist. Uh, you can post your photo booth in the for sale section for free. Um, same thing with, uh, as offer up. Um, you're not supposed to put services, but you can get away with a little bit more wording there. You could put rental and all that. We haven't been flagged for that ever, I think. Um, and the next one is Facebook. Make sure you are uh, you have a page, and then on your personal page, join groups. Join as many groups as you can. I mean, like, let's say you live. Uh, I live in Hacienda Heights. I joined all the Hacienda Heights groups with thousands and thousands of people, and post on those groups like, "Hey, we're offering a discount to local members on this group. We're uh, we're a Hacienda Heights based company. We'd love your support. We've booked." dozens of jobs that way and it's free you're getting the best thing about that too is you're getting jobs close by so you're not traveling far to to drop your booths off it's it's like a win-win um also again on facebook they have um a marketplace a place where you sell tangible items same thing goes as offer up um just be very vague just put photo booth in the title photo booth uh, photo booth message for more details and it's the same same exact way Okay, so Instagram. Um, 
This is my favorite, favorite way to get jobs because this is where you build relationships with people. It's, it's basically marketing, networking, right? You're networking on Instagram. The way we do it is we type in Los Angeles at the, on the hashtag section on Instagram, hashtag uh, LA wedding planners or LA DJs or LA uh, venues. And we have a, like a script basically just saying, hi, Andrew from Rustic Charm Booth. We are a uh, professional photo booth service rental company. We would love the chance to work with you and offer our services for your clients just to make you that much better at what you do. Something just generic, an intro stating how you can help them because half the time they get messages from people that are just saying like, I want this, I want that. No, let them know that your service is gonna better them and their company. So just have something and you just take 30 minutes a day, send out messages, right? Find out where these, uh, the hashtags are valuable. So like even photo, even hashtag Hacienda Heights photo booth company. Reach out to local photo booth companies and let them know like, hey, I'm just getting started. This is how much I'm charging. I'd love to work with you. Um, if you wanna charge more, go for it. Uh, this is what we charge. And if you ever get booked, we'd love to, to take that off your hands or, or, or whatever, just just network because these these are people that are getting jobs. If, if you go to their page, you see they're posting, you could see that they're at events, you know they're working. So it, it'll always help having good, strong relationships. Um, Okay. Oh, wow. All right. Um, how to get jobs. Okay. I think that's it as far as landing job. Oh, no. Oh, okay. So make sure, not just social media, make sure you make a Yelp page. Um, Yelp isn't just for food. People actually go on Yelp for, for everything. Um, make sure you make a Yelp page. Uh, maybe do a couple events for free. That way you can get familiar with your setup and then you can also make uh not make but ask those people for yelp reviews and um you know just get a few and it'll help um yelp actually has a promotion where when you first sign up and you create your listing you can they'll give you free credit so uh when we first signed up for yelp it was like 450 dollars worth of credit and we landed five jobs and netted around 1300 dollars in profit um from those jobs and I think we went $10 over budget. So for 10 bucks, we made 1300. And like I said, when you do, when you do this business, you'll realize uh, the longer you've been in it, the lo the least amount of networking and, and um, advertising that you have to do because it'll end up being word of mouth, you know? And every time, let's say you get hired for one, one wedding or for a birthday party, every time that family has a birthday party, they're gonna hire you if you do a good job and you know your software, you set it up correctly, and you're professional, they'll hire you for life. It happens. So that's um, super, super important. Um, all right. Uh, so Yelp and also Google Business. Make sure you make a Google Business page. Um, they have promotion too. It's like 500 credit, but I believe you have to spend 500 to get 500. Obviously, in this video, I'm not going to recommend you doing that. But um, down the line, um, it'll... It'll benefit you for some Google ads. That's that's where everyone <laughs> everyone uses Google. So that is the section of the video about how to get jobs. Um, so yeah, so let's say you do get hired. Let's talk about the process from, okay, you, someone found you on OfferUp. They're like, yes, we wanna book you. How do you do it? So if you don't have a website, you say, just let them know like, what's your email address? I have a set of questions about your event and um, they send you their email. You're gonna to wanna to make an email. Um, send them an email to their email saying, where's the event? What's your name? Phone number? All the information that you're gonna to need to get yourself to that event. You don't have to ask every single question, just the bare minimum. And then they're gonna respond. You say, all right, perfect. Yeah, the address, um, you know, we, we do travel there. Obviously you wanna make sure you know that before, but just kind of confirm like, um, we have everything we need. But to book, okay, deposits, yeah. So to book your photo booth, we do require a deposit. You guys, it doesn't have to be a set price. It doesn't have to be half. I, I find doing like 25% down um, works perfectly. Make sure they know it's a non-refundable deposit just because once once they send a deposit, that, that, that their photo booth is no longer gonna be advertised or available to anyone. It's exclusively theirs. So 
that you got to make sure it's non-refundable because someone will book you and then last minute just say, hey, uh, we decided uh, the party's too expensive or they'll make up a lie and say something happened and they can't do it. And then you're left with no event and you're out on potential money. So yeah, make sure they know it's non-refundable. So after you have the email, you, you ask for the deposit. How, how do you get paid for that deposit? Well, okay, this is how we do it. We do, you can, they can pay Zelle, they can pay us via Venmo, but be careful, Venmo will charge a fee. So if they wanna use Venmo, make sure they send it as friend to friend, not for a service. They can do PayPal, Cash App, and any other way that, that you can create a free account and for them to send you money. But be careful, if they do use PayPal, make sure you charge them like a 5% fee because you know if they wanna pay by credit card, you can do it via PayPal. But PayPal will charge you for that. So look into that. Um, and then after they pay the deposit, send them an email about the template. Um, if you're doing a basic template on the software, um, just make sure you know like, well, what colors should we use? What are the exact words for the template that we need to use? Exact words. Um, half the time they'll spell something wrong and you might not even notice it. And your whole event, you're using a freaking template that has like the word birthday spelled biff day <laughs> or biff -di. <laughs> it's happened. I, I swear. I, w I was at a wedding once and I had their uh, wedding date wrong, but I just go off exactly what they tell me. Um, I did that after. So so if anything happens to the template and the wording is wrong, you, you can go back to that email and it says exact template wording. Um, and also when you do the template, ask them if template email, ask them if they have a uh, invitation. You can always use the invitation for um, inspiration to make the template. Because they, they may not even know what a template is, but if they have an invitation, you know they liked the way the invitation looked because they sent it to everyone, and that will allow you to work off of that. So, invitations are key. And um, obviously too, you wanna make sure you've tested everything. You're at a point now where you're getting booked. Make sure you know what you're doing. Um, and I, I just remember that I forgot. Another thing you're gonna need in, uh, <laughs> to buy, and it'll be in the description as well, an, ex an extension cord. Definitely need an extension cord and some gaff tape because you wanna make sure you tape up the cord if it's shown. Um, I'm gonna link those in the description. And uh, I didn't, when I showed you the setup, I didn't have the iPad plugged in, so you gotta make sure it's plugged in. It's common sense, but I'm going over everything. This video is almost like 40 minutes, so. Um, yeah, so you gotta make sure everything's tested. Make sure, you know, before you leave to go drop everything off, the night before you went to their event on your iPad and you've tested. And when you're at the event, before you leave, test the booth. Test it, test it multiple times. Because half the time you, you may set it up, but you, you may not have signal, or you may have accidentally turned off the internet on your phone, on the iPad, I mean. It, it just happens, so test, test, test. And before you leave, uh, if the person that hired you is there and they're available, just show them. Just show them how the booth works. I'll be like, hey, let's do a quick photo. It does it. Um, and then you show them the options and then you have it sent to your phone or their phone. And then they get it. Uh, and then after they get it, they're they're usually blown away. You'll, you'll be surprised how many people booked you and they don't even really know what the photo booth can do. So once they do that test, it's it's like it's kind of gratifying you like <laughs> they're like super excited and then you get you leave knowing that they liked your booth so um all right so that's pretty much it for the video but i did include don't go yet don't go yet i have some tips if you're interested um things that i've learned along the way that have really helped me so tip one is after you leave the event um you've had a test photo sent to your phone um, if you're using Simple Booth, you'll be able to access the online gallery. So throughout the the duration of their event, just every 30 minutes, just go to the gallery and just make sure that you can see photos that it's being used. Or um, yeah, you just want to make sure that everything's running well or that the photos are okay, decent. Because sometimes you know, it could you could you could leave and then you check the gallery and you'll realize that you change the settings and everything is pitch black. It's dark. Or something so just check the gallery from time to time uh, tip two um, I'm leaving this up to you you guys can charge your clients in two ways you can charge per hour or you could do what I do and just charge them a flat fee for their whole event um, and just drop the price uh, a lot of people like to feel that they're getting an all event deal when they only really need the booth for two to three hours so it's it's up to you how you want to structure it we do 199 plus travel fee 
And for the bare bones, you may live in a different place where you could charge more or maybe less, but um, go to your, see what your competition is charging. And if you're just getting started, go a little bit lower. Uh, it's business. I know a lot of people might cringe or they might think that's unethical, but businesses do it all the time. They want to be the most affordable because when you're the most affordable, that means that you're most likely going to get hired because a lot of people want to get the best deal possible as they should. Like, why wouldn't you? But, um, yeah. So, uh, if, if you're charging per hour, if you go to the event, if before you go to pick it up, maybe give a call or text your client and say, Hey, just looked at the gallery. People are using the booth still. Uh, do you want to add another hour? Uh, you know, if you want to add another hour, I can give you $20 off or whatever. And if they say yes, well, that's perfect. That just means you made more money and you don't need, you didn't even have to go over there. Um, so, you know, you don't want to just show up and then have them tell you like, Hey, like we want it longer or it's just easier if you, you contact, but sometimes you might show up and they might want it longer. Then that's when you charge them the full amount because you already came down to pick it up. Um, so it's up to you. The same thing goes when you're charging, charging, uh, for a whole event, if you show up to pick up the booth and they want it longer, you got to charge them. That's not your fault. You came to pick it up, then now you have to wait and waste your time. So make sure you charge. Okay, so tip three is to ask friends and families for reviews. Um, bring the booth to family parties so they, they could see it. So it's, this is not unethical. So, you know, bring it to family parties or, you know, do whatever you need to do. Offer it for free. And then when you offer it for free, ask kindly to leave reviews and make sure uh, it's on Yelp, Facebook, and Google. Uh, and make sure that you, you have them leave reviews with photos. Um, I've, I've had a ton of Yelp reviews um, get flagged. The algorithm on Yelp is terrible. It's terrible. That's why I would never recommend paying Yelp for ads. Um, they like remove, they remove legit ads because they think it's suspicious or fake. So um, don't, don't, don't pay for them. But yeah, make sure that uh, you, 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 you get as much as you can if you're doing something for free. Um, also, if you're asking for reviews, make sure it's spread out. Don't, don't, don't send out a bunch of text messages and emails right away asking for reviews. So one day, hit up your cousin that used your photo booth at a party, say, hey, can you leave a review? They leave a review, wait a, next, wait a day or two, and then ask your grandma or whoever. So just spread it out, don't do it all at once. Um, tip four, um, before you leave your event, I highly recommend you, oh, I say, before you leave the event after you set up the booth, take photos and videos of the setup if you're doing props, make sure you take that too, because when you show up, if something is wrong or missing, you can show your client like, hey, like, look at my phone. Like, this is before I left. Uh, it's not here or this, this wasn't broken. So that's super crucial. Um, last tip, number four. I probably should have put this earlier. Uh, if you're watching this, this is a really solid advice. Do not do unattended photo booths outside. Uh, unless your client will provide a canopy with three walls, two on the sides and one behind it, and the photo booth, because your photo booth will get uh, destroyed by the sun, it'll overheat, and you'll be you'll be out. You can't you can't really have your cu customer pay for an iPad that got messed up because of the sun. Like I, you got to understand that that's a little insane. So make sure they know they if it's left unattended, if it left if it is outside, it has to be a tent. Also, not just from the sun, for if it just rains or if it gets super windy, you know, it'll fall and you're also liable for that too. So also too, no backdrops outside. A backdrop will 100% fall um, if it's left unattended. People bump into it or it'll fall. You don't want a, a, a backdrop falling on someone's head. You don't, don't want that. <laughs> Trust me, it's never happened to me, but I have nightmares um, of thinking about times where I've done, left stuff out like that. And um, it's, thank God it never happened, but it could have. So yeah, no photo booths outside unless there is a tent, three walls, um, no backdrops outside regardless of if it's next to the house or not. Um, and just let them know like, hey, like our setup can easily fit in the house against the wall. And you know, go look for, sp for space or, or let them know how much space is needed. So yeah, that's, that's it. Um, I hope this video has been super informative. Uh, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe, like this video, tell me what you thought. Um, maybe ask any questions you may have about the business. Also, if you want this set up here, the light, 
the stand, the mount, um, it's going to be in the description and also the iPad that you should get will be in that uh, description as well. Uh, I'll have the Wi-Fi version and the cellular plus Wi-Fi version. So I'm giving you guys everything that you need to get going. Um, I love you guys. Make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.